everyone. Welcome to the Golden Ratio Podcast. I am Jen, GR Mom, joined as always by GR Dad. Hi. How's it going, GR Dad? Pretty good. Thank you for taking care of the dogs while I was away for like four days in Maryland. They're uh, they're very good dogs. Two and two half days. They're very good dogs and you weren't gone for very long. The cocktail of the week, maybe explaining how difficult it was when I was gone, is that we did shots. We, <laughs> <laughs> we made a shot called the BMW 2. It's equal parts whiskey, Bailey's, and coconut rum. It was surprisingly tasty. Don't even push that ball, Jared. Dad. Don't do it. Bailey's is good. The Bailey's. I don't makes like it all Bailey's good. by itself. Well, this was good. With I think the because it tastes like chocolate milk a little bit. I didn't drink until the very end of my twenties, and I remember my dad going, "Oh, you should, you know, try this Bailey's. Try this Bailey's. You'll like this." And I was like, "This tastes like cough medicine." <laughs> I don't like it. Which is surprising. Bailey's is an entryway drink for a lot of people. Yeah, it was not for me. I still no. can't drink it by itself. Like, I, I mean, my, you know, my palate is a little bit different than it was then. But still, I'm not like, ooh, Bailey's, put it in something. But this was, though, I do love Irish cream flavored ice cream. Mm. haagen makes a Irish cream. They used to just make Bailey's haagen but they have an Irish whiskey brownie ice cream now that's pretty good oh that stuff is so good not easy to find in the keys though yeah they have it at Publix. i get it sometimes it's mm. just dangerous because i'll eat the whole pint <laughs> a pint is a unit take that, a fork to the pint a pint is like a mass of beer it's a unit oh everything smaller is a subunit <laughs> uh, all right brody wait hang on you're gonna step on the camera here put, put your face poor bro brody disconnected the podcast hi brody you're a nice boy so let's do some dog updates, starting with uh, Brody had his surgery on his ear. Yeah. He's wrapped up like he's got a little babushka, it like does. he's a Hungarian grandma. Kind of looks like an Ewok, too, because his face is a little squished. But they uh, they wrote on his little bandages, so there's a heart, there's the date, and then there's a big circle where his ear is, and it says ear. <laughs> the damaged <laughs> ear. And the doctor said that's so that when they cut off the bandage, they don't cut the ear off with it. Which, I mean, like, we don't definitely don't want them to cut the ear off. No. It's just cute that one side says ear. Yep. Uh, his ear sticks out the other side, so that's good. He's doing yes. fine. Uh, he, he seems less troubled by it than he than I would be. Yeah. I'll tell you that much. So he, I think he gets this off on Saturday, right? He gets it checked and replaced. Oh, sorry, Broads. I would love you to have that thing off I your head. I think he's got it like a week after Saturday. It's Well, oh. that's suture removal, so he may get it off on Saturday. We We still have to put a hood on him. It's a no f- flap. Yeah, you don't want his ears flapping around. Yeah, no flap, flap, flap hat. <laughs> It'll be like a hoodie. It'll be like a little cap. Like a little sock on your head. What is, what's the thing called? There's a there's a name for it. You can actually look these up. Anyway, he no went... No flap, ear flap. He did fine, and uh, they also did a dental cleaning on him. Yeah. Which was great, and he didn't have any tooth problems. They just cleaned them all up, so he's got nice shiny white teeth now. Do you think he needs to go out? That or he wants dinner. You don't need another dinner yet. Second dinner. No, it's, it's time. not time. Se- second no, dinner. No. Uh, so that's Brody. He's doing fine. But Which is just to show he's exactly the same, except with <laughs> he has a hat on. <laughs> but you can't get low maintenance dog of the week when you have surgery and a thing around No, your head. I think you've... No, no. Um, let's see. Voods. Is weird as always, but doing fine. <laughs> yeah. uh, he's pretty active. I mean, he's alert. We do have an appointment. Oh my god! After after a struggle that literally left me crying in the bathroom, we got them scheduled to go up to the orthopedic doctor who did the surgery for Voods uh, in July because he's not putting any weight really on his leg that got repaired, which should not be happening. So we're gonna get him rechecked. <laughs> did you see him? No. He's he's like... Oh, he's pretzeling. <laughs> he's got all of his weight, I think, on his neck. <laughs> he's kind of in a little ball. Uh, but anyway, he needs to get that rechecked. And we're going to get um, PRP for Hopper, which is what I've been getting in my butt to try to make someday. My butt won't hurt, but today's not the day. Uh, I've been trying to make it that day with these injections. So she's going to get the same thing in her elbow. In her remaining elbow, so it doesn't get all arthritic. Yeah. The scheduling... We don't need to talk about the details, but it was frustrating enough that I was crying at the end. <laughs> and we we have been trying to schedule a a 
examination of Hopper since before Hopper got her leg amputated. Oh, like fucking August. Yeah. We finally got it. This is the same uh, pro- same process now. It's November. Uh, Brody, do not unplug the pod equipment. Don't. No. Just again. Ch- ch- Let's just say again. Don't. Hang on a second. God damn it, Brody. I told you not to do that. He seems untroubled. Ugh, I'm not even talking to you. Don't come over here. I'm not giving you dinner or affection. Stop unplugging my equipment. He's like, I, I'm fine with this. Uh, I'll go over to Ingo. <laughs> anyway, it, we finally got them scheduled for December 20th. <laughs> we got like a six weeks away appointment. So we are going to try to take vet uh, Voods to the vet you know, soon here just to see if they can find anything obvious that's troubling him. But he needs to go up there. Just because he's got a banged up leg. All right, still. let's take Brody out. Okay. All right, Brody did his business. That's good. I'm sure he's relieved. Uh, Vink is making angry face at Guac, so there's going to be some background noise again, but that's why y'all are here. Let's see. <laughs> uh, so anyway, Voods and Hops in December will be going up to Maryland with GR Dad. Road yes. trip. Uh, absolutely no dogs coming back. I Reverse mean, unless it's... grocery trip. Unless it's really urgent. <laughs> <laughs> we have... I was telling GR Dad this week, I'm like, yeah. I think... I think the current dog configuration is maybe a little much. <laughs> like it's just a little too much. There's too much sort of potential crisis with the <sighs> epilepsy and the diabetes. It's not the number because when we had Maggie Jasmine, Case O'Reilly, Hops and Vink, which was six dogs, it was great. Yep. Relaxing, awesome. This configuration, however, and Hops and Vink are the same. So Guac and Voods, Remy and CB the boys it's the boys riley a sweet sweet angel these boys difficult (laughs) i love them all they all get to stay oh i guess that's the thing that we could say so remy has officially won me over so he He gets to stay permanently look at that sweet boy he uh he will remain technically a foster you know till we get his medical stuff sorted out but Oh, um, don't tell him because he'll turn into a total miscreant after he knows. Hey, I got take backs, Remy. When he's, when he's <laughs> official, he'll just like start stealing our crap. You're not going to be official for probably a year with all of your eye surgery and other stuff, but uh, he's he, going to stay. So He'll be going through your jewelry. He'll be like identity theft. I'm you. sorry. Didn't Vood eat my headband? <laughs> Dear Dad's like, so I brought back this like... <laughs> bandana patterned headband from maryland i just got back yesterday was that yesterday yeah i just got back yesterday oh my god i brought this back and today your dad's like did you uh bring did you have a red headband with like a bandana print and i was like yeah i just brought it back did somebody eat it he's like well i found it in Wood's poop i was like that can't be the one i brought back yesterday that was the other one that i had he <laughs> ate it he ate all of it i mean it wasn't a piece of it it wasn't shredded it was ingested he must have just wandered into your office it was like it that the one that he ate was like a gator kind of thing you know like a stretchy tube yeah that's what and i had used it like it was up on a shelf and i had used it for some reason i think to like clean off my ceiling fan (laughs) maybe i had not i I never had used it in my hair but i was like i just need something to get like oh yeah the, (laughs) the light on my ceiling fan in my office was jiggling and i tried to fix it and the thing collapsed onto the floor it fell on the whole glass bulb fell down and and shattered it was bad pieces like during a meeting that i was in it was very dramatic and so i think when i was cleaning that up i there was something that i had to wipe down and i just grabbed like the closest thing that could be washed which was that and i think i left it on the floor Thinking, oh, I'm going to bring this with like other stuff into the wash. And I must have left it. And well, Bood got it. Bood's horked it quietly, though. I mean, I never saw him in there. There's a whole sneakiness. He's, he goes in there sneakily yeah. and destroys stuff. And then I guess he's out. he's potentially alone all night long. But I keep it closed usually. That's true. Anyway. Uh so anyway, Voods is having some more like problems, but we're going to get them sorted out. Uh, Remy, was, we got like five solid days of data off his Freestyle Libre, his continuous blood glucose monitor before it came off. And then Gier Dad went and got a new one and it didn't attach right. So I, I did not attach it right. Uh, when I emailed the vet, I was like, so, you know, he we got five days of data and it fell off. And then we went and got the fourth one because these are supposed to last two weeks we're on our fourth one in like six days yeah. i was like so we can go in and got the fourth one i'm out of town i was like 
and either Ingo didn't quite get it on right or Remy scratched you right away. I didn't get it on right. It I was, didn't fully throw you under the bus. Ah, uh, you can blame me. It's, it's, it's okay. I'll take responsibility. It wasn't Remy's fault. This one wasn't Remy's fault. So uh, anyway, we're we're figuring it out. But that's why if you see him wrapped up with vet wrap, it's to uh, to hold that thing on. And also to keep him from scratching at it. Though we have a lot of diabetic followers who have been giving me really good advice about like patches and things that can go over it and that are waterproof and all sorts of stuff. So we have a lot of things to try, uh, but we're just like at the very beginning of figuring it out. So uh, what we have found from it is that, so Remy's blood sugar is supposed to between be between like 80 and 180. And if it gets too high, that's long-term dangerous. If it gets too low, it's you could die, die right now dangerous. So the too low is very bad. The too high is like, well, that's a thing we need to work on. And so normally it's too high. It's in the like 350s most of the time. Yeah. And then every day, kind of around 1 p.m., it starts declining until it bottoms out at like 50, where like a human would be barely conscious. Comatose. Uh, it's not good. He's fine. I mean, we've had one incident where we could tell he was hypoglycemic and it was super low. One reader said 20 and the other one just said low and we had to give him all sorts of stuff. Uh, but 50 is still not good. But our vet's like, well, you know, because we don't check dogs that often, like they could actually have that kind of fluctuation. And if he's not showing clinical signs, we may not want to do much about it. But we just need to get a lot more data. It's He's, he's complicated. Like we can't give him more insulin because when he was on... Right. One more unit of insulin, right? He's on eight now. When he was on nine, he had that really scary crash where he was running into things and confused and like couldn't quite stand up. So right. we can't the, give him more, but it's too high all the time. That's the thing. He he has a pretty high high and he has a dangerously low low. And we can't really uh, complicate. So future steps for Remy, it may be that we have to go see an internist because there's something more than just like regular diabetes go on, going on. Um, my like non-expert guess is that maybe we might try another insulin at some point to see if that makes a difference but we just need more data um our vet's also been gone the last two days so she hasn't had a really much of a chance to look at it so we'll see but it's great to have that thing the data is really addictive oh you could you get to like wave your hand, uh, iphone over like a like a wand or something and it checks the the level right then Immediately. And, and you get a whole, they do the, it does every minute it collects a blood glucose reading. So when you wave your thing over it, you get every minute of yeah. the day. You get a real curve, not connect yeah. the dots. It's, it's great. Um, so it's going to be really helpful as we figure out what to do. But it shows me that we're not like two weeks away from him getting his eye surgery. We've got a lot of work to do on this. He's not stabilized if it's fluctuating by like 400 points in four hours. Yeah. The good news is that he's like, he's happy. He's sweet and affectionate. Oh my goodness. He's playing he really with, has settled in. Playing with Vink now. Plays with Vink? Voods. Played, played with Vood this morning? Yeah. And he can't see. He's no, just kind he's of, good. he kind of guesses where he needs to pounce yeah <laughs> does a good job yeah it's it's great how much he's playing with everybody i mean he plays with everyone except hops and cb who both don't play with anybody no so, we don't want him playing with hops at this point <laughs> vink did try to to play with hops and she did her classic takedown move which is now quite easy since hops is down a leg <laughs> and i was like knock that shit off Vink. like that's a dick move that's not fair no so uh <laughs> yeah so anyway that's remy everybody else is fine there's no news on anybody else i guess so uh no escapos from guac no seizures on boots no seizures on foods vink is doing good hops is still doing great so that's the dog updates um i just want to say no escapos from guac that's at least one baseline minimal thing that i did yeah but I the neighbors to. are also gone <laughs> in my, <laughs> in my defense there's no one over there having bacon and steak chicken and chicken <laughs> yeah um <laughs> yeah guac i've got on my to-do list like to really work more with guac on his training uh it'd be nice to get him up in maryland for a little while and have michael work with him on his training some more michael or the trainer who worked with him before but he's magic he is but we can't it'd be hard for you to bring voods and hops and guac all at the same that's time a, that's t turning into an rv trip Ugh. yeah that, and that that becomes really hard yeah i don't want to put three dogs in a jeep if we don't have to i brought five once I mean, five a few times. Dude, I know you. it's possible, but again, we had to then. Yeah. That was a must, right? This is a... Mm. Yes, Guac and I can train together. 
Guaco man. He's my boy. I love him. He's still a good boy. Uh, I should mention that the reason that our cocktail of the week is the BMW number two shots is because Jared Dad and I both got our boost COVID booster shots. Yeah. I got mine yesterday and he got his today. I also got a Tdap, tetanus, diphtheria, and petrusis. Yes. Which is great. You got to get that, you guys. You got to get your Tdap every 10 years. If you don't remember getting one, go get another one. Petrusis is whooping cough, which I had, and I broke two ribs, and I didn't sleep for three months, and I coughed at the longest I could go without coughing was 14 seconds for three months. Dear Dad was with me when that happened, and you were extremely patient with me literally waking up at first coughing all night and then waking up sometimes in these coughing fits where I would cough. I would have a fit of coughing so hard that like sometimes I would almost pass out. Sometimes I would almost throw up. Yeah. You almost puked. That's what the whooping is. You cough, 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 and all your breath is out. And then you take a big breath. You whoop in a breath. That's the whoop. When you can stop. Uh, it's terrible. It was it was medieval terrible and, and let's just say you were vaccinated as a kid it just wears off it, you have That's to get the it every 10 thing. years you, you were vaccinated yeah yeah that happened um when we came down to the keys for the very first time we ever came to the keys i i we were at little palm island which is the resort that we have gone to and i kicked a sea urchin like we had one full day right we had two nights one full day and i kicked a sea urchin and had to go to the hospital so it was like four hours of our day was this hospital odyssey and there was an unvaccinated kid in the er who had whooping cough you know in retrospect and i caught it from him uh and of course no masks then and whooping cough is like super contagious so if you follow like the covid news they talk about the r not for covid which is like if you are infected what's the average number of people you're infect and you you want the r not to be less than one because then it peters out and it's been like two with the delta variant it's been higher and the r not for whooping cough is like 14 or it's some stupid number the measles is 14 yeah it's it's ridiculously contagious like if you look at contagious like percentages, right? So if you encounter someone who has a disease, what's the likelihood that you're going to get it? Like HIV is like half a percent. Uh, so if you have unprotected sex with someone with HIV, there's a half a percent chance that you're actually going to contract it. Uh, if you're next to someone who has whooping cough, it's like 95% chance that you're going to contract it. So if, if that kid looked at you funny, you got it. I mean, that's it. We're just sitting in the, in the like tiny waiting room of Fisherman's Hospital and that poor kid. And the thing is like babies die from whooping cough at an alarmingly high rate. So, and it's interesting. I was talking to the lady at CVS yesterday and she's like, you know, most of the people we get coming in for this are like new grandparents, right? Because they're, oh yeah, their kids are having kids. And the pediatricians or the the OBGYNs are like, anybody who sees this kid has to have a whooping cough vaccination because if a baby gets it, like it's one of those diseases where like kids and especially infants are way, it's way more dangerous for them. And they, they die. I mean, it's more than 1% Oof. of kids who get whooping cough die. A terrible death, right? Can you imagine like your infant just coughing until they turn blue and then they die? That's what happens. It's, it's terrible. It's terrible. Uh, so anyway, you can still get it as an adult, and it's not it's not that common because most people are vaccinated against it. But like all these parents who aren't vaccinating their damn kids for everything, like they're getting it because it's still around. And I got it because I think the last time I'd had a vaccine, I mean I was like 34 at the time, and the last time I'd had any vaccine was probably when I went to college when I was 18. So it had just worn off. Sure. So, if you have not had your Tdap, also you don't want to get tetanus. Nobody wants lockjaw. Diphtheria is fucking medieval too. <laughs> not that that's around there very much, but tetanus you can just get from stepping on stuff and getting a. I mean the the story of tetanus is right. You like step on a rusty nail, yeah, and you get it. But it's not in the rust; it's just a bacteria. But you get lockjaw. Your whole body seizes up. You can die from it. I mean, it's like a super emergency and. So it's like you it's a bacterial infection, but it produces a toxin and the toxin causes all of your muscles to seize up and there's no antidote or treatment for the toxin. So you have to go to the hospital because you can a huge percentage of people will die from it, you know, relatively speaking, but there's nothing that they can do other than like manage fluids, the and symptoms, keep you pain, a lot of alive. pain medicine. Yeah. Like keep you alive. Basically, you don't want tetanus. Most people get, end up getting a Tdap when, like, they get 
you know, have some sort of accident that ends them in the ER and they'll go like, when was the last time you had a tetanus shot? And then they give you a Tdap. But if you haven't had one, go get one. Uh, it's not like COVID where you feel really bad the next day. Like your arm is a little bit sore. Um, but it, it's not like a thing where you have flu like symptoms or whatever. I gotta say, I was just shocked that you can go on the website for CVS and say, here's 14 vaccinations. You can just choose which ones you want. Yeah. Now you don't need a doctor or anything. I can be like, I would like the lot. I want all 14. <laughs> I want the Tdap. I want, I don't know what else they have. Pertussis or, you know, that's in the pe- the P, I guess. There's two pneumonia ones, shingles, flu, COVID. Yeah, shingles, which is like a serious vaccine. I could be like, I feel like having a, a shingles vaccine and they'd be like, or shingles is one of those. It's another two, two dose shot and apparently feel really bad. Like flu like symptoms. I'm going to do it. I, w- no, I wanted today. to do it. You you're supposed to be 50 or over to get it. And so I wanted to get it because I'm a hypochondriac and I couldn't get it. And then I got shingles instead and it sucked. <sighs> so, uh, sh- it's on my list to do maybe in the new year. I'll, because I think that my doctor will probably let oh, because you had chicken box as a kid. I had chicken box as a kid. Yeah, and I had I had a very mild case of shingles, but it still sucked. So now I'd like to get vaccinated so I don't get a more serious mild one. Mild case of shingles. That's like you know, Spanish American War wasn't much of a war. <laughs> For those who died, it was a hell of a war. I so shingles is kind of like getting. It's sort of like chicken pox, right? You get like an outbreak of like little blisters and tends to be like on your stomach. I, I had a little patch that was like the size of a quarter, but some people will get it and it's like an entire half of their trunk is these really painful blisters and your nerves hurt and it feels kind of like a cold Yours sore. was bad. I don't want to, I don't think you need to minimize it. Just other people have it horribly, horrendously worse, but yours was bad. I mean, it was not fun, but it was like 5% of what most people the, get. The stoicism that you have or the level of, ability to to tolerate all this crap is amazing to me I, yeah but it was still pretty mild i, I mean objectively you know I, that's, one of us is uh, a scientist in this conversation it's not you i'm just a f- <laughs> i would i would be terrible at handling every the butt hurting the whooping cough all you stuff. you do have the kind of stereotypical man response to being sick Oh my, it's just terrible. It's like... The, like why, emotionally, it's very hard for you to like be I feel like just, sick. yeah, why even, go, why even bother? It's all over why now. Why go on? <laughs> it's all over now. <laughs> I have a slight fever. I might as well just lie down and die. The good news is that it's very rare you get sick. I got to say that there was one Christmas that you came to Illinois to visit my family and we picked you up at the airport and you had the flu. Everyone could tell. <laughs> because you were like red and burning up and yeah. exhausted and we oh my god we went out to dinner and we were my mom and i picked him up and we were both like are you sure you want to go out to dinner like should we maybe just go home and you were like no no it's fine <laughs> poor poor ingo I, I think it was like the second time at your parents at least it wasn't the first time no it, it it was probably the third it was maybe the second christmas you spent there i mean he had a fever of like 103 <laughs> and we're like out at dinner <laughs> uh you felt so bad and then of course i got it after you and we, but we were like at my parents' house for a week with like fever and like shivering. We were both like um, under the blankets, like a right? love seat in the corner, covered in blankets. I would wake up in the middle of the night having like sweated through the sheets, which uh-huh. I got from yeah. You were you were quite stoic about having the flu. Huh? Then I mean, you went out to like Big Bowl for dinner. <laughs> oh, I got to eat <laughs> on like December twenty third. Uh, anyway, anyway, we're. We're both boosted, triple triple jabbed. Yeah. Which feels pretty nice. I think I can fly. I got to say, I feel fine today. Like my arm's a little sore. I was a little tired in the middle of the day, but uh, I feel much better than after I got my second shot. This is not, and, and I, have, I mean, I haven't had any really serious days after the COVID shot anyway, but this is pretty mild. I think I think I have superpowers now. So I heard you say that the first time. I think it was funny then. It's going to be funnier <laughs> the third time I say it, perhaps. Maybe I can <laughs> that see that through. That is your strategy. Maybe I can see through walls. Let's see. Uh, Come on. What superpower would you think was funny? <laughs> I'm going to try them all. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, let's see. We So I guess last time we talked, we said that we had gotten approved for super followers. We still don't have a super follow button on Twitter. But in talking to people, like super followers, it turns out it only works in the app on the iPhone and like maybe just for U.S. people. 
um, though they're talking about expanding it. So like all of our non-iPhone app, non-American, non-Twitter people couldn't use it. So we set up a Patreon, which is the thing we had resisted for a long time. But it's basically the GR Dad Wholesome OnlyFans slash uh, bonus dog content. I mean, I haven't done anything yet for it. So I have done a bunch, though. So <laughs> I've mm. I've posted kind of behind the scenes shots and, uh, you know, photos that we're I'm like, OK, I'm not going to edit these and post them to the main account. But it's like, you know, Vood's in his chicken waffle costume and uh, that stuff. When Brody got out of surgery and the vet called me, I posted an update to Patreon because like, I wanted to wait till he was home to have a picture to like tell everybody how he was doing. But on Patreon, I was like, hey, just got a call from the vet and the vet said everything's fine. Um, so it is like a real insider track kind of thing. And but it's so it's not we're not doing less on everything else. We're just doing slightly additional things on Patreon. Yeah, I, I would say probably five days a week. There's today. I, ha I don't think I posted anything on the Patreon, but every other day I have. And some of it's like produced stuff. So like the dog treats of the week and what we'll probably do tomorrow, the GR dad, dad joke. Ooh, I better get ready. I got to find something to wear. Uh, but other stuff will just be, uh, you know, extra stuff behind the scene, behind the scene shots. And like there was one, one video we put in the snaps of Remy and Vink playing out on the porch but we had taken like four minutes of video. <laughs> so we put a minute of it in the snaps, but I, I was like, here's an, here's another like minute of video that we <laughs> didn't put in there. Uh, Cause like this one's also really cute, but we can't just put four minutes of video of them doing that in the snaps. Uh, at least if it's me, to your dad's snaps are a lot longer than mine. <laughs> so anyway, that's, that's what you get over on the Patreon. So if you are a super fan, you may be interested. If you're not a super fan, it'll be boring. They do have a thing where you can do podcast just like a patreon podcast for your subscribers hmm. so we could if we wanted to do like some kind of podcast thing for them but i kind of like having these plus all the no rules over here yeah so anyway that's golden ratio news uh dear dad i have the german word of the week this week yeah i know you you're like doing the whole thing i don't need to do anything i just sit here and drink shots which is not so bad i was looking on pinterest and I get a lot of like magical ocean content on Pinterest. Magical ocean. Sea wishing, witching, casting ocean spells. Are you a witch? Maybe. Cool. Do something cool. <laughs> <laughs> as far as I know, I have no magical powers. <gasps> um, How about the ability to withstand pain, but not cure it, just withstand it? I mean, that, that I got. You for should sure. trade that in for curing. <laughs> So anyway, one of the things that Pinterest told me is that um, hagstones are good luck. And these are rocks that have holes worn into them by the water. And Ingo and I were talking about that and because we have a ton of them. So they're supposed to be very rare, except I go out and found like one or two every day. Ingo finds a bunch. Uh, so it's great. We've got this pile of these like lucky little rocks that have holes in them. And he's like, hagstone is a bad word. And so I was looking it up and I was like, well, they're sometimes called witch stones. So maybe I am a witch because I stone collect is them. Witch good. But it said the German word is Hühnergötter. Hühnergötter. You say it. Hühnergötter. So chicken rock. Chicken egg. Yeah, Goethe is a word for gods. So I... But it Chicken must have a different God. old fashioned meaning. You know, it must be a, it must describe a, 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 a mineral found formation or something. Hunegut. Aus oh fuck. I'm gonna try to read you some in read German. the German Wikipedia page. No. Aus Hunegat wird in Deutschland Volksmühlich ein Stein mit einem natürlich entstandenen Loch. Bezeichnet. <laughs> Dear Dad's leaning over me because I'm not pronouncing any of this right. I just want to find out what the gut is in this because it's not, gut is God, right? Mm -hmm, G-O-T-T. -T. Mm -hmm. But it's not a chicken god. <laughs> it must they do mean, have pictures of these rocks with it holes must in them. It must be an old-fashioned word for rock. I don't know. I don't know what any of this says. It's hard for me to even pronounce it all. Yeah. It's supposed to protect you from um, evil spirits. Yeah. Well, we got a bunch of them. Yeah. There's some like that are really smooth and they have smooth. Ours are kind of craggy. I think ours are a little bit related to the um, coral and. Yeah, it's the nature of our rocks. Yeah, yeah. They're still pretty awesome. They are awesome. So. Hex Hexensteine is better. 
That in German they call it. That's a witch stone. Hexensteine. Yeah. Witch yeah. stone. That's better. Yeah. Witch stone's better. I just like that Hunagata has um, chicken. Hun is chicken. Yes, yes, totally. Which feels like it is appropriate for us, like magically appropriate. <laughs> chicken. Yeah. Chicken god. Chicken god. Holes, stones with holes. Hexensteine. Hexensteine. Pretty Sounds cool. Good. Yep, yep, yep. All right. So that's our German word of the week. Hunagotten. Hunagotta. Hunagotta. Mm -hmm. Chicken god, <laughs> which is slash witch stone. Witch stone. Stones with holes. Hexen, Hexensteiner. Yeah, Hexensteiner. Uh, okay, so that's a German word of the week. Maybe two German words of the week. Sure. Taste of the keys. We have two stories. Story number one is that there is an a bill that has not yet been submitted but is circulating around representatives in the state house in Tallahassee to abolish the city of Key West. Unbelievable. Just get get rid of it. A f an affront. The city of Key West is a very well-run city, but they're mad because it's liberal. <laughs> There's a bunch of like Trumpy Republicans up there and they're like the, they interviewed so Gwen Fialosa, who is the Keys has the keys beat for the Miami Herald wrote a really good article and she interviewed all these people and one of them's like this is stupid I know who did this is this dude and that dude's like I didn't do it but uh, I'm not surprised these rogue cities need to be brought under rogue control rogue cities you know why because we had masks and we it's don't cruise want ships. cruise ships yeah yeah uh, which I think we talked about a couple of weeks ago. Key West voted in November of 2020 to ban large cruise ships from the port because they absolutely like fuck up the water quality and they dump all their sewage like right next to our tiny island. It's, they block the sun sunset. <laughs> it's it's terrible what they do. And yeah. and you'd go like, well, it's a lot of money. It's because these giant cruise ships dock in Key West. Uh, but we actually, they don't, like the, the cruise ship tours don't spend a ton of money and we have higher... So there haven't been any cruise ships you know, up until a couple of weeks ago. There had been no cruise ships in Key West since March of 2020 because obviously they stopped for COVID. And then some of the lines that restarted were like, well, we're not going to go to Key West if they don't want us to go there. So I think they added a stop in Nassau instead. And so like the first one came in a couple of weeks ago. But our tourism income in Key West has been higher since the cruise ships stopped coming. So it's totally not hurting our economy to not have the cruise ships here and then i had seen some fucking interview with someone who said well key west just wants to be martha's vineyard of florida <laughs> and all of these elitists there are trying to keep you know regular people who takes cruise vacations out and i was like bitch have you ever been to key west <laughs> like anyone who's been to key west would not be like well it's like the martha's vineyard of florida like that's a bunch of bullshit there's plenty of places in florida you could say are trying to be the martha's vineyard of florida but key west would not be one of those places no it's naples or it's <laughs> <laughs> something like else. marco island there's yeah. gulf islands oh any of the like east Sanibel. coast the, the 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 rich enclaves like wherever um mar-a-lago is is like the martha's vineyard of florida i mean it like martha's vineyard at least like has some charm <laughs> like i don't know that i would say palm beach is i mean uh, nothing critical of palm beach but like like you could say Sanibel Island, right? Doesn't allow any chain restaurants. Like it's all very local and whatever. Like maybe, but maybe Martha's Vineyard like, but not Key West. Key West had fucking orgy week. <laughs> yeah, you know, Martha's Vineyard would not have orgy week. We had, we had, the roads were being blocked because Popeye's opened here. <laughs> it's not, it's so <laughs> stupid. No, it's just your cruise ships keep fucking up our tiny island. So anyway, you know, they over the state of Florida and the, the legislature and then Ron DeSantis overrode the referendum that passed in Key West to ban the cruise ships. So the cruise ships are back. Uh, they're not all of them. So they just hate Key West because it's like a solidly liberal little place in Florida. So they have it hasn't actually been introduced as a bill and everybody agrees it would go nowhere. Uh, but it's. It, it was an interesting little news item this week. I don't week. know. Key seceded once. We'd have to fight for our independence, Conk man. Republic, man. I'm, I'm on the side of the Key Westers. Absolutely. We have already got our Honk Republic passports. The other story is an interesting one from like a week ago. Oh, yeah. All right. So I, I put it in here. Man arrested in identity theft case. Sounds boring. Again, the headline undersells the story. <sighs> That's a real problem in Conk life. 
All right. Man arrested in identity theft. A 47-year-old Lower Keys man already in jail for DUI and domestic abuse is facing additional charges after stealing another man's identity. This dude facing... All right. We're going to call him Scott. Okay. Scott is facing new charges of illegal use of a personal ID, providing public record information to commit a felony, and providing a false ID to a law enforcement officer. The case began when Lower Keys detective received a packet in the mail from a Jacksonville, North Carolina police detective outlining the victim's case. The packet was sent to the sheriff's office because the, spec- the suspect in the North Carolina detective's case, Scott, was in the Key West jail. So basically this dude in North Carolina has been working this case and he's like, where the fuck is Scott? <laughs> Scott gets arrested and he's like, oh, I got him. Got Scott. So he mails in the it's mail. Like a case in an envelope. You know? Yep. The packet in, out- in the mail. That's in so the funny. mail. It doesn't it, surprise it, it me. It specifies in the mail. The packet outlined an extensive investigation that included work done by the North Carolina detective and NCIS. This is the interest. This is the hook. The Naval and Naval Criminal Investigative Services, Leroy Jethro Gibbs, perhaps involved. <laughs> <laughs> D- definitely the dc office the lab was involved oh my god i was we've just watched every ncis we finally finished ncis i we started watched, from the what, beginning of five or six years worth of ncis in about uh, two no months. ingo it started in 2013 Ugh, eight years of ncis in th- 18 three months. years it's too much ingo. 18 yeah get out yeah 2003 it was like post 9 11 world wow i know that's why it was it was too much. We, we were watched watching like five like, episodes a day. <laughs> we were. It, it was wasn't too, too much. much. It was great. It was like they were neighbors. <laughs> it was too real. <laughs> anyway, NCIS was involved. Okay. So, essentially, the new husband of the victim's ex-wife stole the victim's identity in 2017. So, Scott stole this naval officer's identity in 2017. The Navy guy was stationed in Japan in 2017. He started getting strange credit inquiries. He learned his identity was being used in Florida by someone trying to get a job. He reported it to the IRS. Then the Navy guy got stationed in Bethesda, Maryland, right by our house, our old house. Uh, He, let's see, he was stopped trying to enter a military installation. I'm guessing the Naval Medical Center in Bethesda. Bethesda, That's the only real Navy thing there. So this naval officer is trying to get into, say, the naval hospital in Bethesda, and he gets stopped because he has an active warrant out of Florida. He later learned that Scott was using his name on an illegally obtained driver's license. So Scott's fucking driving around, getting pulled over, crashing into people. As this guy. Using this guy, using the Navy guy's name. So he gets in a crash in Key West, and the Navy guy's like, I've never fucking been to Key West. I've literally never been to Key West. <laughs> and they're like, well, you have an active warrant. He's like, I have never been there. <laughs> Can you imagine the nightmare? You're it's like this totally nightmare, yeah. apparently quite responsible naval officer and like your credit and you're getting stopped trying to go to work. And it's your this asshole. And it's your ex wife's new husband ex-wife's too. It's bad. It's, that that makes it just a little bit worse. It really does. It just makes it worse. Because she's somehow responsible. <laughs> I mean, she brought the guy into your life. Yeah, she did. Bad taste, ex wife. <laughs> So then the Navy guy moves to Jacksonville, North Carolina. He's being sued for the traffic accident in Key West. That is a place he's never been to. And then they figure out that Scott, our DUI guy, used the Navy guy's information as an alias during a traffic stop in Key West. The Navy guy's like, do you know anybody named Scott? And he's like, yes, my fucking ex-wife's fiance. (laughs) That's who it is. So the Keys detective reviews the DUI case and the domestic uh, violence on Scott and Scott has given the Navy guy's name to the cops and so the the Key West cop is like "Mm mm-hmm he puts it under his aliases and so uh, he already was in jail so he didn't get taken to jail but he remains in jail he should remain in jail for a lot longer yeah new charges on the way so thanks NCIS Good job, NCIS. And also, clearly a dogged detective from Jacksonville, North Carolina, who's mailing packets around, like, tracking this guy. The mailing doesn't shock me the way it does you. I'm just saying, like, it's it's slow. It's to be like... A few days. 
Yeah, I'd be <laughs> like, I'm going to email you all this information right it now. Can take please me have a, a call in half few hour. days to scan it. <laughs> oh my god! I mean, it, I picture like the dude maybe has a mustache and like a real big yeah. sport coat to cover his yeah. holster. Anyway, he did a great job helping get this solved because that's a nightmare for the Navy guy. Yeah, I f- I fear these things happening, and at least he had NCIS. Plus, you know, this one detective <laughs> to help him, right? Like a regular person. He just like get sued and lose or something yeah. or, or go That's to get, get the warrant would be would be effective. Yeah, yeah. no, it's a real ni- night nightmare. Leo, hopefully the Navy helped him. So. Uh, so anyway, that's our. Taste Tonk of the keys. Life. Yep. Yep. Taste of the keys. Yep. Powerboat races are over. Things are a bit more quiet. The big news for us is that Blue Heaven, our very favorite restaurant, they normally close in September, which is a real slow time in the Keys. And then they open back up in October because people are coming down for Fantasy Fest and all sorts of other stuff. But September is a slow month because, like, everybody, you know, kids are back in school. Summer vacations are done. So there's not a lot of tourism. So they close in September, like always. And I think they were going to open back up, like, October 8th, October 12th, 16th, like around there. And then it was like, oh, we've had some construction delays. (laughs) <laughs> and then they're like they'll be open next week and then they have some more construction delays so they literally had a sign hanging like a piece of paper taped to the yeah. gates and there'd be like opening october 16th and then there'd be a line like sharpied through it and it'd be like october 23rd and then a line through it and then they'd write like sad very frustrating next to it hopefully november 2nd uh this has been going on <laughs> <laughs> for like two months now. So finally today they announced they're reopening tomorrow, November 19th, like months <laughs> after they they closed like September 3rd. They're, they're in the Poor keys guys. just like us. Speaking yeah. of which, what? the rocks are still in our yard. <laughs> yeah, well, someday we'll get What's a seawall. What's it been, two weeks someday now? Someday we'll get a seawall. Some, two days some truck today. just pulled up. Oh my up, God, like a month. It was like a month. giant boulders in our yard, left, and now we don't know what's going on. Someday they'll come and fix it. Also, someday we're we're going to get, we have to have our spalling fixed. So spalling is when water basically gets in your concrete. Our whole house is made out of concrete. Uh, and if water gets in, which happens because there's salt water and it'll penetrate through. And if you don't keep stuff painted, uh, it gets in primarily on the stairs and like the porches. It will eat through the rebar that's supporting it, which has happened to us because the other people didn't take care of it. So we have to get our front stairs, which are concrete replaced and the front porch and the back porch, like half of it replaced. It's a ridiculously expensive and huge project, which is also going to start, they said, mid to late November, which probably means end of December. Since it is mid to late November now, and we've heard zippy. Not a goddamn them. thing. Uh, and then we're also on the list to get our <laughs> second bathroom <laughs> renovated. She What's just did air quotes, by the way. Oh my God. What's going to happen is it's going to be like December 29th, and all three of these crews are going to show up at once. December We're 25th. <laughs> huddling in the bedroom like you, me, and six dogs on the bed. Oh, my God. Unable to leave. Because all the contractors are going to be fighting for porch space. Uh, parking. It's, they're going to be parked on the front lawn. Oh, my God. Whatever. It's fine. They're going to uh, be like, what are all these rocks here for? <laughs> and the, like they'll have a the little front loader trying to move the rocks. And then like the spalling guys will have to move their cherry to picker. Their cement mixer. Uh, <laughs> I, I just want it on record that's probably going to happen but whatever it's fine yep but nothing has started yet obviously or is imminently starting no no kidding i mean no one has told us any day though i just expect the seawall guys any day to be like hey we're here at 8 a.m yeah that's could true you open the gate it's true we really haven't made as much fun out of those rocks as we could have i i climbed up we to really them once done something there's not much i mean it's not that exciting you're just on top of the rock (laughs) (laughs) i was expecting more of a high but it really is not very thrilling it's not that high and the dogs have no ambition to climb them either even guaco man who's a who's a good climber yeah you could see him getting up there but no he doesn't care no i mean we've thought about encouraging him to go up there but haven't quite gotten there yeah he could be king of the hill he could be not a thing for dogs apparently Not, not that dog not our dogs all right well anything else you want to add that was a good note girls only in future 
dogs. Only girl <laughs> dogs. Let's go back to the basics. The girl dogs have all been easier than the boy dogs. Putting a bunch Maybe of girl dogs together has been, in our experience, a lot easier than having boy dogs. And the occa- I mean, boyfriend was great. The occasional boy dog can sneak in. If they have the right disposition. Yeah. None of these assholes do. Maybe it's having two or more because then they get all weird. Guac would be weird even if he were the only boy. <laughs> he is. He is <laughs> oh my God, food. Weird. He'd be normal if they were all girls. He would not. Food can't tell if there's another dog or... I mean, we are at the point though where some you let a dog out and Vink like starts barking at Voods because she's startled that there's a dog outside. <laughs> Vink's in her own little world. That's true. It's good. This is her strength. All right. Any other actual stuff to add? (laughs) (laughs) Jeez. Uh, No, apparently no. Okay, great. Until next week, don't bite anyone unless they ask you to. (laughs) Bye.